Hi, this is Jose Figueroa with an Approved Workman, where we are rightly dividing the word of truth. Welcome to another week of Bible study. I am so glad that you're here as we open up God's word one more time. Our current series is Living Hope, a study of the book of 1 Peter. If you're new to this Bible teaching ministry, here is how you can learn more about our work. First, go to our website, www.enapprovedworkman.org. That's enapprovedworkman.org. On the website, you can learn more about the purpose of the ministry, our approach to Bible study, and also review our statement of faith. You can listen to previous episodes of our current series or any episodes from previous series. Uh, from the website, you can also subscribe to the podcast, which is available on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and Amazon Music, as well as other podcast directories. You can connect with us on social media. On Instagram, we are at an approved workman. Our Pinterest profile is pinterest.com slash an approved workman. And our Facebook page is facebook.com slash an approved workman 215. You finally can subscribe also to our video channels. If you're watching the video version of this lesson on YouTube, you can connect and subscribe and uh, hit that bell so you can get alerts on new episodes. And our video lessons are also available on Rumble. So multiple ways for you to connect with an approved workman. Let's get started. We all long for home for being in the place where we are supposed to be. Sometimes we long for the place where we spend our growing years. We take trips to go see family or to visit the place where we grew up. Those trips can remind us of the good old days, remind us of where we came from originally. And now that we're able to travel again for either pleasure or business, we enjoy the trip and the experiences we can have. But at some point, we get that feeling of, it's time to go home. Does that also apply in the, in the spiritual world? Believers are told by Jesus in Scripture that we are not of this world. And the Apostle Paul reminds us that our citizenship is in heaven and that we are really ambassadors of Christ to the world. That means we are not really citizens of this world. This is not really our home. And ultimately, this is not where we want to be. Yet, here we are. We are citizens, citizens of God's kingdom living in a foreign territory. And this is not only foreign territory, but it's also hostile territory. As the world system hates and opposes Jesus, so too they will openly hate and oppose his people. On top of that, we experience the trials and tribulations that come from living in a world that has been cursed by sin. We live with the consequences of sin, the sins of others, and our own sins. We long to be free from all that evil and suffering. But in the meantime, how should we live? The Apostle Peter, who walked with Jesus, lived for Jesus, and died for Jesus, encourages us as we live as strangers and pilgrims in this foreign and hostile territory. He understands that we will face trials and hostility. He understands things are not easy. That's why he wrote two epistles to a group of believers who were scattered throughout the world and face similar challenges. In today's episode, we are beginning a new series, Strangers and Pilgrims, and we will study both 1 Peter and 2 Peter. He wrote these two letters to Christians scattered throughout the world who were predominantly of Gentile background. We know those two letters as 1 and 2 Peter and these scattered believers face the same challenges we face. 
as we study these letters from the Apostle Peter, we will see that he will remind us that because we are in Christ, we have a living hope that anchors us. We will understand that we have been granted everything we need for life and godliness. He also will tell us that we can live holy lives because the one who called us is himself holy and we belong to him. He has called us to stand as a new kingdom of priests. And with that assignment, we can stand for the truth of God and have an effective witness towards the world as we endure suffering like Christ endured suffering. So today, let's get started with an introduction to the book of 1 Peter. Our series on 1 Peter is titled Living Hope. Our key passage is 1 Peter 1, 3 to 5. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his great mercy has caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to obtain an inheritance which is imperishable, undefiled, and will not fade away, reserved in heaven for you, who are protected by the power of God through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. 1 Peter 1, verses 3 to 5. Let's learn a little more about the author of 1 Peter. Uh, the consensus is that the Apostle Simon Peter is the author of both 1 Peter and 2 Peter. He was originally known as Simon, his Greek name, or Simeon in Hebrew. Peter was the son of Jonas, who is also known as John, and Peter was also the brother of Andrew, another one of the twelve, and it was Andrew who introduced Peter to Jesus. The apostle was a member of a family of fishermen who lived in Bethsaida and later in also working in Capernaum. Uh, he was clearly the leader among Christ's apostles. He was their spokesman. He is the one who articulated to Jesus their thoughts and questions. That's why we see him so frequently speaking on behalf of the twelve, asking questions of Jesus. Uh, Jesus renamed him Peter. Uh, in Greek, or Kepha, Cephas, as we read it sometimes in English, the Aramaic version of that name, both words mean stone or rock. Peter was part of Jesus' inner circle, along with John and James. And the Holy Spirit empowered him to become the leading gospel preacher from the day of Pentecost on. He opened the door of the gospel to the Samaritans, as we read in Acts 8, and also to the Gentiles in Acts 10, as he met with Cornelius and Cornelius' household, sharing the gospel with them. Peter was martyred via crucifixion during Nero's great persecution around A.D. 67 and 68. These details uh, come from Dr. John MacArthur in his MacArthur Bible Commentary. Let's look now at the scriptural setting for 1 Peter. These notes come from the Ryrie Study Bible by uh, Dr. Charles Caldwell Ryrie. Uh, the letter is addressed to aliens scattered, or literally the sojourners of the dispersion. Uh, these were Christians who, like Israel of old, were scattered throughout the world, though the readers of this epistle were predominantly of Gentile rather than Jewish background. Their situation was one of suffering and trial, but not because of the empire-wide ban on Christianity, since that came later. The sufferings referred to are those that often come to Christians as they live faithfully in a pagan and hostile society. Persecution took the forms of slander, riots, local police action, and social ostracism. The readers are encouraged to rejoice and live above such reproach. The place of writing was Babylon, a symbolic name for Rome, much used by writers who wish to avoid trouble with the Roman authorities. Peter was in Rome during the last decade of his life and wrote this epistle about A.D. 63 
just before the outbreak of Nero's persecution in AD 64. Now let's talk about the timeline of uh, the book of First Peter. Pentecost uh, occurred uh, 30 AD. Uh, it is believed that in 33 AD uh, it was when Stephen was murdered and also the same time of Paul's conversion. Uh, the Apostle James, the brother of John, was martyred in uh, AD 44. Paul's first missionary journey occurred uh, 47, 48 AD. The Jerusalem Council, referred to in Acts 15, occurred uh, AD 49, 50. Uh, the Apostle Paul launched his second missionary journey uh, the years AD 49 through 52. AD 54 is when Nero became the emperor of Rome. Paul's third missionary journey, the last one we have a record of in the scriptures, uh, occurred AD 56 through 58. Uh, in, it was also AD 58 that Romans, uh, the epistle of Romans by the apostle Paul was written. And then Paul was in house arrest, under house arrest in Rome, AD 60-61. Uh, as we mentioned earlier, uh, First Peter was written around A.D. 63. A.D. 64 is when there was that great fire that consumed the city of Rome that Nero ended up blaming uh, on the Christians. Second Peter uh, was written in A.D. 66. After that fire, Rome and uh, Nero blaming the Christians is when that great persecution occurred. So when we get to Second Peter, it is during that time. Second Peter was written around A.D. 66. Uh, the records show that Peter and Paul were murdered around the same time, A.D. 67, around the time of that persecution, as part of that persecution. Nero died A.D. 68, and Jerusalem was finally destroyed in A.D. 70. Uh, this timeline also comes from the Ryrie Study Bible, so you can see uh, both first and Second Peter, written in uh, in the in the sixties, A.D. sixties. Taking a look now at the geographical setting uh, of First Peter, uh, if you're uh, watching this lesson on our YouTube or Rumble channels, uh, I'm displaying now a map provided by uh, the Gospel Coalition. It will be. On the series page for first peter as well in the 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 post for the first lesson uh, but first peter uh, is writing to believers in pontus galatia cappadocia asia and bithynia these names all refer to roman provinces in asia minor north of the taurus mountain so you can see uh, in the on the map you can see where these areas are located where these believers lived how far they are away from, from the home base of Jerusalem. And it's believed that Peter at this time, he's in Rome. That's why he says he's writing from Babylon. So he's not there with them. So these two letters, uh, both first and second Peter, are written to encourage people who are kind of away from the home base, away from the apostle. Uh, he knows them, but he's writing to encourage them. But uh, Dr. Chuck, Chuck Swindoll always tells us that he's, you should get a Bible, a study Bible with maps, and you should always look at maps so you can have an idea of what's happening. So I, hopefully this map provided by the Gospel Coalition will be helpful to you. To have an idea of the structure of First Peter, let's take a look at the content outline. Uh, this is uh, provided by the MacArthur Bible commentary by Dr. John MacArthur. This is not necessarily how our lessons will be broken up, but it will give us an idea of, of how the book is structured. Uh, first, uh, division, major division that Dr. MacArthur has is remember our great salvation. That's chapter 1, verse 1 through chapter 2, verse 10. Um, second major division, remember our example before men, chapter, chapter 2, verses 11 through chapter 4, verse 6. And then finally, remember our Lord will return chapter 4 verse 7 through chapter 5 verse 14 and again this is how dr macarthur breaks out the content of first peter uh, in three major sections remember our great salvation remember our example before men and remember our lord will return 
what I'd like to do over the next few moments is share uh, a high level view of the message of First Peter. And as we do in all of our Bible study series, we bring in uh, commentary, study guides, resources from trusted Bible teachers and preachers, expositors of the word, students of the word uh, to supplement and complement our study uh, as we go forward. And this series will be no different. Uh, we're going to start uh, with Dr. John MacArthur from his MacArthur Bible commentary. And this is what he had to say, quote, since the believers address were suffering escalating persecution, the purpose of the letter was to teach him how to live victoriously in the midst of that hostility. Number one, without losing hope. Number two, without becoming bitter. Number three, while trusting in their Lord. And number four, while looking for his second coming. Peter wished to impress on his readers that by living an obedient, victorious life under duress, a Christian can actually evangelize his hostile world. And again, that's the end of the quote from Dr. John MacArthur on his Bible commentary. Here is what Dr. Tony Evans shares in his Bible commentary on the message of 1 Peter. Quote, Peter wanted believers to know that new birth in Christ gives hope that will aid perseverance in spite of what we go through. Peter blends doctrinal truth about our salvation with practical truth about how it is to be lived out in our various life situations, including in the relationship between husbands and wives. Peter knew about suffering because he had experienced it as a disciple of Christ. But he also learned how to endure it with joy and victory rather than sadness and defeat. In his very helpful book, Understanding the 66 Books of the Bible, Dr. David Jeremiah tells us this about 1 Peter. He says, quote, Simon Peter was one of our Lord's original followers, and he experienced every dimension of discipleship, both good and bad. In 1 Peter, the old fisherman drew from a lifetime of experience to tell us how to conduct ourselves as pilgrims and strangers in the world. Much of this letter is written with suffering in mind, teaching us how to respond when grieved by various trials. We are to commit ourselves to God, to follow in the footsteps of Christ, and to give others an answer for the hope within us. End quote. Dr. R.C. Sproul also wrote a commentary on both First and Second Peter. He titled that, Be All the More Diligent to Make Your Calling and Election Sure. Here's what he has to say about the message of First Peter. Quote, Imagine what it would be like to receive a letter from someone who was a personal friend of Jesus during his early ministry. Beyond that, imagine receiving two letters from such a person. When Peter writes to the church about faith and trust in the providence of God in the midst of suffering, he's speaking not in abstract terms, but from the vantage point of one who has been called personally to endure such sufferings himself. He is one who testifies beyond speculation as one who was an eyewitness, testifying not to cleverly devise myths or fables, but to what he had seen with his eyes and heard with his ears. End quote. Dr. N.T. Wright has published uh, a series of Bible study guides called For Everyone Bible Study Guides. He has one on First and Second Peter and Jude, and here's what he has to say about the message of First Peter. Quote, the small groups of believers must have been very concerned. Here they were, far from Jerusalem, the founding center of the church and of their faith, dispersed in the regions of Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia, which is now Turkey. Did the persecution which was increasing mean they were on the wrong road? 
So the believers wonder, should we be listening to new teachers instead of the gospel message we originally heard? In response to this situation, Peter wrote two letters. It was important to be sure that his readers will be able to hold on to the truths which he had thought. Peter insists that it was the truth. He was an eyewitness, not just of this, but of all Jesus had said and done during their three years together. Hold on to his death and resurrection, he says. That's the sheet anchor. He is the true Messiah, and one day he will be publicly revealed as such. End quote. Dr. Warren Wiersbe also published a commentary on 1 Peter. It's called, Be Hopeful, How to Make the Best of Times Out of Your Worst Times. Here's what he had to say, quote, Peter wrote this letter to Christians who were going through various trials. The apostle knew that a severe, fiery trial was just around the corner, and he wanted to prepare believers for it. After all, what life does to us depends on what life finds in us. But God's message to us is, be hopeful. Suffering leads to glory. I can give you all the grace you need to honor me when the going gets tough. The future is still as bright as the promises of God. So, be hopeful. End quote. Finally, let's hear from our friends at the Bible Project on the message of 1 Peter. Here's what they have to say, quote, Peter offers hope to persecuted Christians and guides them with practical instruction on following Jesus. 1 Peter emphasizes the role of apostles as chosen by God to share his gospel. Because of this, their persecution can actually be seen as a gift because it offers them a chance to show others the surprising generosity and love of Jesus, which is fueled by hope in his return and victory over evil. Peter is hopeful that their imitation of Jesus and demonstration of his upside-down kingdom will give power to their words as they bear witness to God's mercy and show people the beautiful truth about Jesus. First Peter gives persecuted Christians a powerful reminder that they have hope in the midst of their suffering. From the time of Abraham, God's people were a misunderstood minority and should expect to face hostility because they live under King Jesus' rule. End quote. Well, this brings us to the close of our introduction lesson to 1 Peter. Thank you for listening today. Next time, we will have our first lesson in our study of 1 Peter, and we will focus on chapter 1. Until then, this is Jose Figueroa for an approved workman, where we are rightly dividing the word of truth. May God richly bless you.